Welcome to this week's edition of the Dakota Angler Two Minute Fishing Report. Well, first off, I want to apologize for my voice. I'm actually screaming so you can hear me. Uh, hopefully, we can make it through here. But uh, you know, the good thing is, what is no longer has been the heat. Uh, the heat finally kind of gave way to a little nicer weekend, especially on Saturday. A little bit of rain moved through the area on Sunday, but all in all, a lot of people were able to get out and enjoy a little bit of uh, water time, shall we say, on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, the walleyes, again, a little bit of hit and miss, depending on where you go. Uh, these, Like I said, the dog days of summer, you got to look around for those active fish, and that's what a lot of people are doing to have a little bit of success. They're finding those active fish. As far as the walleye bite is concerned, up in the northeastern part of the state, the lakes that uh, produced a few walleyes, it seems like everyone is going to Wabay right now. That seems to be the main lake of everyone's choice. But other lakes include Bitter, Lynn, Midland, uh, Opitz, Goose, uh, North and South Rush, Big Stone, Dry Lake by Clark, Indian Springs. And that's starting to turn on a little bit, especially along the weed edge. And then also North and South, uh, excuse me, Richmond, and then also Minnewasta. Down the southeastern part of the state, the lakes that have been producing walleyes continue to do so, and there hasn't been much change in that whatsoever. Uh, Dry Lake by Willow Lake seems to be the best bite right now. Other lakes include Ponset, Thompson, Sinai, uh, Spirit, a few being caught there, as well as North Island. Madison, during the week, uh, the weekends have been uh, too much uh, recreational traffic, if you know what I mean. And then also Twin and Vermilion. Uh, the Missouri River continues to do really well. Uh, but again, a lot of fish are found deeper uh, this time of year with the water temperature so high and they're using snap weights to get down to those types of fish. Uh, what else are people doing to catch the walleyes around the area? Again, a lot of people are, are covering a lot of water uh, by trolling crankbaits such as the Selma Hornets, the uh, Rapala Shad Dancers, the Berkeley Flicker Sheds are all popular crankbaits that people are using now to cover a lot more water looking for those active fish. If people aren't pulling crankbaits and are using uh, bottom bouncers with uh, crawler harnesses or with slow death rigs that have been working well. Also the Walleye Nation Creations Death Jig. We just got a bunch of them back in. They've been working well. Other people are also snap jigging. Again, using their forward facing sonar and finding those fish and putting it right in front of their nose and getting them to bite that way. So those are the main ways that people are getting the walleye spite this past week. Now as far as the bluegill bite is concerned around the area, uh, you know, some really nice bluegill being caught. Clear, South Buffalo, Big Stone, uh, Enemy Swim, Twin, Madison, as well as Vermilion are all producing some nice bullhead, uh, nice bullets, nice bluegill. Uh, and what people are doing to catch those uh, bluegill, just using small pieces of crawler with a hook underneath a bobber, or uh, otherwise uh, using waxworms or small red worms to keep that in mind for this upcoming week. In this week's edition of Todd's Tackle Tips, we're going to talk about trolling and some of the tools that you can use to make it a little bit more successful because obviously this time of year, as I mentioned in the report section, you need to cover a lot of water looking for those active fish and trolling is a method that you can use to allow you to do that. Whether or not you're using bottom bouncers, but uh, more often than not this time of year, people will troll with crankbaits. This Hornets, as I mentioned, is probably one of the more popular crankbaits right now that people are using. And so what you need to do then is try to figure out and determine the depth of where those fish are at and then also to have the tools to allow you to get to those depths. One of the first ways to do that is with the line counter. We've talked about that before. And then the other thing is the line that you're using. And then, you know, you can get out to many depths uh, with regular monofilament, but you're going to have to let out a lot more line to allow that crankbait to get to that depth. The other way that you can do that is you can use snap weights, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that people are doing out the river. Yes, something else that you can use is lead core. There's two different types, types of lead core that we carry, the suffix and also uh, the uh, tough line lead core. And most often than not, people will use 18 pound. And what the lead core will do is that the weight of the line allows you to let out less line to get to a deeper depth. And so again, you don't have to have so much line out behind the boat to get to the depth that you need to be at that body of water. So again, lead core is very popular. And we do have plenty of lead core on hand, as well as that we will uh, put lead core on your reel as, at the same time. We do have bulk lead core. The other tool that you need to have is a proper trolling rod. And uh, many different types of rods out there by many different companies, many different lengths. And this time of year, it really does help to get that crankbait a little bit further away from the boat. 
Uh, so you can use planer boards that will also help, but also you can use longer rods. And that's where 13 Fishing this year came out with these new longer rods. Uh, they go from 10-6 uh, also to a 12-foot and a 14-foot rod. That allows you to get that crankbait and that presentation well away from that wake of that boat, and that won't scare off the fish. So again, all those tools are very important to have that if you're going to be successful when you're trolling this time of year. And now it's time to take a look at a few photos that you sent in to me this past week. And remember, folks, if you'd like your photo included in next week's version of the 2-Minute Fishing Report, please send it to me. Send it to Todd at DakotaAngler.com or post it to our Facebook wall. And before we end this week's report, folks, I want to remind you that if you're looking for anything fishing, make sure you stop by here at the store. And if you can't make it to the store, give us a call at 605-336-9132 or check us out on the web at DakotaAngler.com because everything that you see on the floor here is also on our website. Well, folks, that's this week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report. For Dakota Angler, I'm the owner of Todd High Camp, and as we say around here, fish on! We'll see you next week. And again, thanks for watching. Stay healthy and stay safe. And thanks for bearing with me with my voice.